What's going on? It's your boy Matt, and today is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be giving a brief economic overview of immigration as well as the minimum wage so that people understand the whole conversation from an economic standpoint. Okay, I'm not presenting this with any slant, I'm going pure economics 101. You can look in any economics. Um, you can look at any economics book and see the same principles that I'm about to talk about clearly displayed. So without further ado, in order to actually have this conversation, I got to start with simple supply and demand. Okay, so I got my wonderful whiteboard with me today, and we're going to be doing making a couple of notes. Okay, so all right, so that's about the screen size. I'm going to do this. Economics is the study of scarcity and choice. Okay, basically meaning that given a limited amount of resources. An economy has to make choices about which products, uh, which products and services is going to um, utilize. Okay, so in an economy, I'm gonna drop my marker. And it's not a dry erase marker, so I'm gonna have to wash here. In this economy, we have two sets of data. Okay, here we have the price level, and here we have the quantity. Okay. Here is our supply curve. Here is our demand curve. Okay? Here is our equilibrium point, which means that the exact number of products produced is the exact number of products consumed, where supply meets demand. That's what every economy tries to get to and maintain. Okay? It says that for this many products that are supplied by an economy, this many products will be demanded at this price and at this quantity. Okay? Now, let's say, for instance, that, for instance, what we're going to see on Black Friday is there's going to be a, a, a decrease in the price level. So the supplier is going to set the price level about here. Boom. Well, where is our demand at that point? Here. What are we actually demonstrating here? Oh, let me turn off this light right quick. Hopefully y'all can still see. No, you can't see, so I'm going to I was trying to eliminate the glare. So what are we actually seeing at this point here? We're seeing that at this price level, right, we'll call this P1, at this price level, this many products will actually be supplied, and this many will be demanded. Which means demand exceeds supply, so here we have a shortage. There are more people that want stuff than the producer can supply. So the producer is only going to supply here at Q1, and the people will actually be demanding at D1. Hence why you see 100 people on one little rack at the Walmart. Because there's more people that want the stuff at that price than Walmart is supplying. Walmart survives off of this model. Every Black Friday comes, I guarantee you there's an economist or someone that has actually done this number crunching to find out exactly the amount where they will be the most profitable, where they can create a shortage and make sure that all of the products that they set out on the floor will, will, uh, will sell. Guarantee you. If they don't, then they're probably going to go out of business, which is why they do have it. Okay? Here we have a shortage. Now, say, for instance, the supplier decides, you know what, I'm going to jack up the price on this thing. We're going to go from P1 instead to P2. Right? Well, here at this P point P2, at that price, remember, this is just a change in price. At P2, the supply, or excuse me, the demand will be D2, but the supply will be um, S2, excuse me. I'm going to change this Q to an S to show you clearly that this is supply. So that means, of course, it, it makes sense, right? If you're selling things at an extremely high price, you're willing to provide as much as possible, right? But 
people are not going to buy it at that price. Which means what you're going to end up having is a surplus. Okay? You have a surplus. There is, you have more things that you can sell than people will buy. Okay? This is why you get a big lot. This is why you get stores that sell stuff after it's already been on sale because the price was too high. Now they've sold it off um, wholesale to people who are going to sell it and bring that price essentially back down to its equilibrium price. Do you see how a surplus and a shortage happens with just regular goods and services? Well, the same graph applies to the labor force. Okay? And so I'm going to show how an actual shift in the de demand curve actually puts everything on a new scale. Okay? So let's apply this to the labor markets. Excuse me one second while I wash this board. Clean board. Okay. So now we're going to label our graph labor markets. Okay. This is the market for labor. Every time that an employer goes out to hire someone, they are going into the labor market. They are looking for work. So in this case, the companies are the consumer. Here we have again two sets of data we have the wage rate which in our previous graph was the price level right which is the same thing the wage is the price that has to be paid for labor okay so we have wages matter of fact let me make this graph a little bit larger wages and then we have quantity of labor so QL you all see that wages and QL here's our supply of labor and here's our demand for labor okay here's the equilibrium point that says that at the ideal wage, whatever that wage is, whatever the market decides, that is where the exact number of people will get hired and the exact number of people, um, so it's QE and this is WE, okay? <clears throat> so this is the equilibrium wage, which is saying that at $5 an hour, you will hire everyone that could possibly be hired. Okay, and the people will work for five dollars an hour. So basically, it makes sense, right? It, that if the wage level is higher, for instance, say we have a wage one, you can clearly see that on this graph, the demand for labor will be less, right, at that wage. Why? Because companies make money by paying people as little as possible. That's just the reality of it. If they could pay you nothing and get all the productivity out of you, they would. But they know they can't do that. So realistically, we have to look at this graph and understand this is exactly how people go to market for labor, for, for workers. So companies are not willing to pay this price. And that's clearly evidenced on our graph. This doesn't take a Democrat or Republican. This is basic economics. Okay? Basic economics. Forget party preference. This is basic economics. If you don't agree with this, then you are an idiot. I'm sorry. This is basic economics. At this wage, companies are not willing to hire people. Which means, what do we have here? This is uh, QD and this is Q S one. So quantity demanded and quantity supplied. At wage one, 
there are fewer people that are demanded than are actually supplied. Obviously, you're going to have a competitive market at a higher wage rate, which is why you have everyone trying to come out here to Silicon Valley, because the wage rate is high out here. That's an economic principle. It's not just because it's high technology. It's also high dollar, which is why you have so many people willing to work. But the companies can't hire that many people. So what do you end up having? Having a oh, surplus, which means you have more people that are without a job because they can't get the job they want at that wage rate because those jobs are already taken. You have a surplus. Now enter the minimum wage. We're going to get to... We're going to get to um, the, whatchamacallit in a minute, immigration in a minute. Now enter the minimum wage. Say that that minimum wage is actually set higher than the equilibrium wage. Say this is our minimum wage. Boom. So instead of Q1, this is QM now. Now you have a government-enforced surplus, which means that now the government has added to unemployment. These are all people that are not working. That is an inefficiency. Would you rather than working producing taxable revenue and would you rather than working actually being able to provide something for their families versus having them draw on unemployment? Minimum wage, if set above the equilibrium level, is an inefficiency and it leads to more unemployment. We've shown that graphically. Forget your emotions, the numbers don't lie. I know y'all love Jay-Z out there. Men lie, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. The numbers don't lie. This is an economic concept. Now, moving into immigration, we just talked about minimum wage. So all those people demanding higher minimum wage, you need to understand the economics in the market that you're in. Because if your minimum wage is set at a level higher than what people would pay for that same type of work, then the reality is your minimum wage will continue to keep you accepting a government check. And I know y'all don't want to do that. Okay, so I'm going to just erase the whole thing and just re redo it to show you how immigration is really bad. Because that is a price factor... Everything that I just showed was a function of the price actually changing. Where we can see that the price changing only affects how the graph operates. But it doesn't create a new graph. Now I'm going to show you the effects of immigration. Watch out for this. So here we have wages again. And here we have quantity of labor demanded. Here we have our supply. Here we have our demand. DL, S, L. This is our equilibrium point. Okay. Q, E, W, E. That's the wage at which the market clears, where the supply of labor is equal to the demand of labor. Okay. Now let's say we have a sudden influx of immigrants. What does that actually do to this graph? It shifts the graph to the right. The supply of labor now increases and shifts to the right, where we have a new uh, supply curve, which is SL1. Where's our equilibrium point now? Oh! Oh! It's at a lower wage rate. As a matter of fact, every single point on that curve puts downward pressure on the wage rate. So this is WE1. Did you notice that? So here we have more people working at a less wage rate. Do you see that? I hope you guys can see that. Yes, we've hired more people. QE1. Okay. Yeah, we've hired more people, but what have we done to the overall standard of living? It's gone down. You have more people working for less money, 
which means what? They can buy less and less. Now do you understand what we're talking about when we say that immigration is a huge issue and we need to enforce the laws already on the books and deport those that are already here? Because they are making it tougher to get better paying jobs. Because when you can find someone who will do the job for half of what you're going to do it, and they're drawing from the system, the thing that makes economic sense is for a company to hire them. They don't have to pay them benefits. They don't have to provide the amenities for them that they do for the American worker, and they can pay them less. So for all of you people who are talking about, oh, big corporations, big corporations, you need to talk about immigration first. Because big corporations are only doing what makes economic sense. And it's based upon the laws that your politicians are passing. When you couple this downward pressure on wages with the demand for an increased minimum wage, think of what you're doing. What you're saying is, we want a minimum wage that is higher than the equilibrium wage. So the only thing you're doing is you're accelerating the problem. You're creating a larger surplus of American workers and increasing the workforce of illegal immigrants. If we say that the new minimum wage should be $20 an hour, and that's over this new equilibrium point, right? Because we've already allowed the illegals in, so the curve has already shifted. So we're actually operating on this curve, and the more that we allow in, every single immigrant, illegal immigrant, whether they be Hispanic or whether they be Russian, anyone, any illegal immigrant shifts this curve over, continues to put downward pressure on that curve, the more of them that are employed. So every single one added shifts that curve. Okay? Because these, this, these are new factors being added to the economy. This originally was the American, American workforce, that supply curve. Right? This represents the American workforce. But as you add people to that workforce, it shifts over. Okay? But if we go to a new minimum wage... Now we have another surplus. Guess who that surplus is primarily comprised of? People who would have normally worked for this wage, but now are not able to work anymore because the company is not going to hire them. And therefore, if we know that the illegal immigrants are working for a lower wage, they're the ones that are actually getting the jobs. So it's a twofold bend you over. So the next time I hear somebody talking about how we need to do something about this immigration problem, I'll say, yeah, we do need to do something about it. Close the damn border and kick the people who are working here illegally out or make them become American citizens and pay back taxes, period. That's the only solution to this problem. That's the only economic solution to this problem. Because I'm sorry, unskilled labor that can't speak English is not going to be a net benefit to the American economy. It's just not. You've clearly seen through the graphs that illegal immigration puts downward pressure on the wage rate. So all of those jobs that you're competing for, guess what? It's got a lot harder. Not only that, but the Ill illegal immigrants are going to college now. So now there's even going to be pressure from skilled work jobs. So this is a problem that we're going to have to face. And it's going to be my generation that has to face it. Because in large part, our parents' generation is getting closer and closer to retirement. It's my generation and your children that are not going to be able to have these jobs, let alone be able to go across the street and cut your neighbor's grass. It's just the reality of the situation. I don't care how harsh it is. That's the reality. And we have a president that is lockstep in line with legalizing, as, or, or not, not even legalizing, allowing as many illegal immigrants to be here as he can. The Republicans are no better because illegal immigration for the Democrats is free trade for the Republicans. And the same thing applies. So I hope this is beneficial to y'all. It's your boy Matt. Signing out. Wake up.